Welcome to this lecture on splanchnic circulation. Today we are going to understand the organs which are involved in the splanchnic circulation and we are going to understand the liver sinusoids and uh, we are going to see the microvasculature of the villus and uh, we are going to understand what is this reticuloendothelial system and we are going to see the nervous control of the GI blood flow. So in the splanchnic circulation we have the blood flow to the various gastrointestinal organs which includes our gut which includes stomach, small intestine and large intestine and blood flow to the spleen to the pancreas and to the liver. So these four organs are involved in the splanchnic circulation that is gut, spleen, pancreas and the liver. Now we will understand them. So all this blood from the gut that is our stomach and small intestine and the large intestine all this blood and from the pancreas and the spleen all this blood reaches the liver by the way of portal vein and finally leaves the liver via hepatic veins and this hepatic vein empty into the inferior vena cava. Okay, so the blood from the gut, spleen and pancreas flows to the liver by the portal vein and leaves the liver via hepatic veins and these hepatic veins empty into the inferior vena cava. This whole circulation is known as splanchnic circulation. So the blood by the means of intestinal vein and splenic vein it reaches to the portal vein and by the means of portal vein this blood reaches to the liver and in the liver it then distributes into the hepatic sinuses and then leaves the liver by hepatic vein which drains into the inferior vena cava. Now these hepatic sinusoids, liver sinusoids, there are millions of minute liver sinusoids. So the blood passes through these. So in the liver there are millions of minute liver sinusoids which are very important. So the liver have many lobules and in each lobule if we will see the structure of the lobule there is a central vein. Okay. If we will enlarge this structure we can see that this is the branch of portal vein. So the whatever the blood that reaches to the liver by the means of portal vein it reaches to this lobule. Okay. So this is a branch of portal vein. So whatever the blood reaches here will drain into the central vein. Okay. And this central vein then feeds into the hepatic vein and hepatic vein into the inferior vena cava. So this is the blood flow in the liver. It is very important to understand these sinusoids. Okay. Why? Because these sinusoids are lined by the hepatocytes as well as some very important cells and these cells have very important functions. We will see them. First of all, let's see that in the gut, whatever you have eaten, whatever nutrients you, uh, you are taking, whatever you have eaten, so the water soluble nutrients that is non fat nutrients such as carbohydrates and the proteins are transported in the portal venous blood to the liver sinusoids. Okay. While whatever the fat is in your diet, this fat will be absorbed by the lymphatics and reaches the thoracic duct and then reaches into the system circulation so the whatever the fat you are eating it will bypass the liver while the non-fat water soluble nutrients are absorbed from the gut and they are transported to the liver sinusoids okay now this is the structure of villus and we are here showing you the microvasculature. 
so if you can see then there is an artery and there is a vein and there is a central lacteal now the central lacteal is the part of the lymphatic system so whatever fat is in your diet that fat will passes into this central lacteal and reaches into the lymphatic system okay while the non fat part that is carbohydrate or protein will get absorbed in the this circulation and reaches into the portal vein but not only the diet products whatever the drug you are taking is also get absorbed through this villus structure so whatever the drug you have taken orally will passes through your esophagus then the stomach and then reaches the intestine and intestine is so large that it is the very important structure for the absorption of the drugs so whatever the drug you have taken will get absorbed through this villus okay and when it gets absorbed in the villus it passes to the portal vein and to the portal vein into the liver and liver is a very important metabolic structure so whatever the drug you have taken orally will will enters into the liver and there metabolism of the drug happens okay very important concept with that after the uh, after the meal whatever you have eaten the motor activity secretory activity and the absorptive activity all increases of course because we want to digest your meal so because of that all the motor activity will increase secretion will increase of various enzymes as well as absorption also increases and one important point is that if we want to absorb all this nutrient we have to increase the blood flow so the blood flow increases almost eight times okay when you have taken a meal now let's see the reticuloendothelial system now you have seen the structure of the villi and you have seen that the nutrients passes through that will i and reaches into the circulation but not only the nutrients there are many foreign particles foreign subjects which enters into the circulation and we have to protect our body from from that and the one important part which plays its role to protect our body is the reticuloendothelial cells and the reticuloendothelial cells are the descendants of the monocytes so if there is a term monocytes then it means phagocytosis so the monocytes play the role of phagocytosis so the reticuloendothelial system have a very important role of the phagocytosis of foreign materials and particles such as bacteria which are trying to enter our body so it includes the kaffir cells in the liver so it is the very important part of the reticuloendothelial system these kaffir cells in the liver as well as there are microglia in the brain as, as well as alveolar macrophages in our lungs so whatever the foreign particle that is trying to enter in our body this reticuloendothelial cells protects us okay so it have a very important function of protecting our body and these kaffir cells in the liver line the liver sinusoids okay so whatever the blood that enters into the liver all of that blood passes through the millions of sinusoids in the liver and that millions of sinusoids have many many reticuloendothelial cells that line the liver sinusoids and these reticuloendothelial cells phagocyte these foreign materials and particles all the bacteria all the antigens which are trying to enter the body now we will see the nervous control of the gi blood flow now two kind of very important 
nervous controls are there first one is the parasympathetic and next one is the sympathetic nervous control okay so the parasympathetic nerve stimulation increases the blood flow so the work of the parasympathetic nervous system is to increase the blood flow and helps in the digestion of the meal okay so the parasympathetic nervous system relaxes us and increases the blood flow in our gi and helps in the digestion of the meal of whatever you have eaten okay while sympathetic nervous system is activates our body for the fight and the flight okay so if you are fighting or if you are doing some exercise then the sympathetic nervous system activates now at those moments we are not having any diet or something so our gi do not need any blood so in that case it leads to the vasoconstriction of the arterioles and this leads to the decreased blood flow okay because when you are exercising you do not need blood in your gi increased blood flow in the gi so sympathetic stimulation leads to the vaso constriction okay so so during heavy exercise sympathetic stimulation leads to the sh shut off of the splenic blood flow and this all the blood reaches into your skeletal muscles which you need and the heart which you need in those moments as well as when you are trying to run or trying to fight you need the activity of your skeletal muscles and you need the increased activity of your heart you need increased heart rate so when your heart rate increases heart muscles will, will need increased blood flow your heart muscles will need increased oxygen so that is why when the sympathetic stimulation occurs all this happens as well as in the case of circulatory shock the blood flow to your gi decreases because in those moments your vital organs such as brain and the heart need the blood need the oxygen so in that case also gi blood flow decreases due to your sympathetic stimulation now you have an assignment you have to tell me the major arteries that supply the gi track and share in the comments section i am sharing here a hint this is your hint so what knowledge we gain today we know that the blood from the gut spleen and pancreas reaches the liver via portal vein and from the liver it uh, it leads into the sinusoids from the sinusoids it leads into the hepatic veins and hepatic veins drain into the inferior vena cava and all this is known as splenic circulation we learned that there is a very important system known as reticuloendothelial system which protects us from the various foreign particles it phagocytes those particles it includes the kaffir cells in the liver microglia in the brain and alveolar macrophages in our lungs we learned that parasympathetic nerve stimulation increases the blood flow in the gi while sympathetic stimulation decreases the blood flow in the gi such as in case of heavy exercise or in circulatory shock thank you do subscribe like and share thanks a lot these are the references